So moving on to our next term which is reserve buoyancy. Now reserve buoyancy from its name itself it is the buoyancy which is kept in reserve for the ship. So that is why it is known as reserve buoyancy. Now what is buoyancy? Buoyancy as we all know is the upward thrust which is acted upon by water in order for the ship to float. What happens is when the ship is floating on water it displaces an equal amount or uh, equal volume of water which is equal to its underwater volume. This is what we know. So what, what, what is happening is the underwater volume is compensating for the floating condition against, against your up thrust. Okay. So your underwater volume is what, what has compensated for your uh, uh, floating condition. What, what do we have further in order to compensate for? We have the above water volume which is known as our reserve buoyancy. So how do we know what is what is this uh, above water volume is nothing but it is the reserve buoyancy. So above water volume of the intact compartments or the intact spaces of a ship are known as uh, uh, will include your reserve buoyancy. Why intact compartments? Intact compartments are those compartments uh, that on the deck of which where the water rests and the side shell are in watertight condition. Okay, they provide for watertight condition. That is why we, tell, uh, we call them as intact compartments. So once the intactness is lost, uh, there is a loss of buoyancy. So hence, these compartments uh, provide for your reserve buoyancy. How do we calculate reserve buoyancy? Reserve buoyancy is nothing but it is the total volume of the ship minus your underwater volume. This is one, uh, one way of calculating it. If you want to calculate it in percentages, reserve buoyancy percentage is nothing but it is the reserve buoyancy or your above water volume that you have calculated over here divided by the total volume of the ship into 100 basically how we calculate the percentages in that way now what is partial loss of intact buoyancy partial loss of intact buoyancy means there is a partial flooding which is occurring there is a uh, one of the space uh, has holes in it okay so that is a partial loss of buoyancy due to which flooding is occurring in that compartment but it, it is not occurring in all the compartments only one of the intact compartment is partially flooded that also it's not completely flooded but with time it will be completely flooded hence that is the initial condition of such a situation is known as partial loss of intact buoyancy when will this occur in case of uh, some accident in case of some emergency okay when a hole is created whenever your intactness of the compartment is lost that is when a partial loss of intact buoyancy occurs so this is about your reserve buoyancy and partial loss of intact buoyancy. So our next term is freshwater allowance. Freshwater allowance is the allowance which is made for freshwater. When a ship goes from salt water to freshwater, freshwater allowance is nothing but it is the increase in draft when a ship goes from salt water to freshwater or you can define it as it is the decrease in draft when the ship comes from freshwater to salt water. So this is what freshwater allowance is. Now freshwater allowance, the formula is displacement W by 40 TBC. It is displacement in salt water divided by 40 tons per centimeter immersion of the ship in salt water. Freshwater allowance, the SI unit is centimeters. Now what all things change when a ship goes from salt water to fresh water? This is another very important question asked by the surveyors. Okay. So what do you think? Does displacement change? Will the displacement change? things will change. What about TPC? Will the TPC change when our ship goes from salt water to fresh water? Yes, the TPC will also change. Why will the TPC change? Now TPC, the tons per centimeter is dependent on the water plane area. As the draft increases, the water plane area also increases and hence your TPC will also increase. Hence TPC also changes. But if TPC is also increasing, then your fresh water allowance should decrease as per the according to the formula. But why is it not decreasing? Because your displacement compared to TPC is increasing at a larger rate. Okay. And it is greater compared to TPC. Hence, freshwater allowance increases as your draft increases. And when ship goes from salt water to freshwater, your displacement will change as well as TPC will change. So these are few important questions which are asked by surveyors. Make a note of it. 
so friends our next topic is load lines now load lines are so very important with respect to ship because when you are when, when you load your ship you load it up to your load lines so load lines there is a whole convention for load lines which IMO has developed it is the international convention on load lines which was adopted on 5th April 1966 and it came into force on 21st July 1968 there are few uh, notes to be made before moving on to the diagram of the load lines which are as follows now remember these points that all assigned load lines must be marked amidship on each side of the vessel along with the deck line okay now the winter north atlantic uh, is uh, the winter north atlantic load line is uh, is a dotted line which is marked dottedly uh, when you see the diagram okay so why is it marked dottedly because that uh, the winter north atlantic load line it applies only to those uh, vessels which are less than 100 meters in length which uh, trade in the uh, north atlantic region during the winters so uh, winter north atlantic uh, load line applies only to those vessels now another important question which is asked by the surveyor is how much is the thickness of these load lines the thickness of these load lines is 25 mm thick all the uh, all load lines are 25 mm thick they are cut into sh the shell plating and they are painted either a uh, white or yellow for uh, uh, a white or yellow is for a darker background and black is for the light background so this these are this is about the color of the load lines then a very important note now the upper edge of each load line indicates its exact level okay so how do you know your ship is loaded to your summer load line is when the water level will reach the upper edge of the load line the load line is 25 mm thick when the water level rises to the upper surface okay the upper edge of the load line that is when the uh, the load line is met that is the exact level of your summer load line then what is the 1988 protocol what effect does it have on the load line convention the 1988 protocol included the harmonized system of service and certification and the tacit ex acceptance also came into force through this protocol which was included for the international convention on load lines now how, how when when is the load line survey carried out now load line survey is conducted every 5 years subject to annual surveys so these are few questions which are asked by the surveyors with respect to load load line i forgot to mention about the international load line certificate now all ships have to carry this international load line certificate now who issues this what does it indicate and uh, the purpose of it now international load line certificate is issued by the classification society okay now what does it indicate this certificate indicates that the ship is compliant with the load line uh, convention the uh, load lines are properly marked as well as surveyed okay and they are intact then uh, what else the, the load line uh, uh, international load line certificate also gives you an idea about the freeboard of the ship so this is about international load line certificate so friends let's begin with load line diagram how to draw the load line diagram first and foremost you need to begin with the plimsoll line so this is the plimsoll line okay the plimsoll line is 300 mm uh, sorry 450 mm in width so the width of the plimsoll line is 450 mm okay then you have the load line circle which is present remember that the di uh, diameter of the load line circle is 300 mm so this dimension till the outer edge is 300 mm okay so 300 mm the same the same the diameter of your load line circle is equal to the width of your deck line so the deck line lies in line with your plimsoll mark this is the deck line it is also 300 mm width it has 300 mm width okay and the thickness we all know is the thickness of all the lines is 25 mm okay now a very important question which is asked by the survey is what is the center of your plimsoll mark remember that the plimsoll mark and the deck line are exactly at a midship this is a very important point second question what is the midpoint of your uh, plimsoll mark the midpoint is nothing but it is the center 
of the plimsoll mark okay which is indicated at the upper edge of your plimsoll mark so here just a second here this upper edge indicates the center of your plimsoll mark as noted before all the uh, measurements are with respect to your upper edge of the lines okay now moving on to your summer node line now from the center 5 uh, 540 mm further is a straight line okay now the, your summer load line lies in line with your plimsoll mark so in line with your plimsoll mark would come your summer load line okay this summer load line is also uh, 25 mm mm in thickness okay and the width is of uh, 230 mm this is 230 mm in width then we have below the summer we have winter winter load line winter load line is 1 by 48 of your summer draft this is the distance between the summer load line and the winter load line calculated from the upper edges so this this distance is your 1 by 48 of your summer draft then below the winter is the winter north atlantic which is 50 mm 50 mm below the winter the distance is from the upper edges okay winter north atlantic load line is applicable only to those ships which are less than 100 meters which sail in the north atlantic region in the winter season then we have your tropical this is your tropical load line okay it is also 1 by 48 the vertical distance is 1 by 48 of your summer draft then we have towards the aft direction the, these these load lines are towards the forward direction and then we have two load lines which are towards the aft direction one is your fresh water other one is the tropical fresh this is your tropical fresh okay so these width of uh, these load lines are also 230 mm and the thickness all the thickness of all the lines is 25 mm now what do we get from these we get fresh water allowance how is the fresh water how do we get the fresh water allowance the from the summer load line to your fresh water load line okay this distance this distance is the fresh water allowance with respect to summer load line and your fresh water load line with respect to tropical load line and your tropical fresh it would be this this distance is your fresh water allowance okay now this is the plimsoll mark this mark is your plimsoll mark okay from the upper edge of the plimsoll mark or your summer load line towards the deck line okay this distance this distance is nothing but it is known as statutory free board this is your statutory free board okay another important point the registry marks over here you will find either ir if it is indian registry okay now what is the thickness of these registry marks is 25 mm what is what are its dimensions so this is 75 mm dimension width wise okay and vertically it is 115 mm okay 
both the sides. Here also it is 75 mm and vertically it is 115 mm. So the, these dimensions I have got it from the uh, International Load Line Convention. Okay. So the, this is all about your uh, load line and how you are supposed to draw it and few questions related to it. Thank you.